Hi everyone. I am Dr. Rashmi Richa and today I want to go through the topic of suicide. Disclaimer. This is only for you since Starmid Nakoski prep information is for medical use only. This does not reflect in actual examination or the actual examination content and is only made to help IMGs prepare for the upcoming Nakoski exams. The information is wide available online and I used the same information to prepare this video. So first of all, in a Nakoski exam, the main important thing is some station tips. We have to read the description carefully. This helps us to assess how long the history needs to be taken. Or you have for the history if any questions will be asked at the end. Questions and answers. Leave time at the end for question and answers with the examiner. And the third important tip is practice, practice, practice. This will help gain you a good score in Nakoski exam. Suicide is a very important topic. It is the patient in front of you maybe in a grieving position, in a depressed mood. So the opening consultation is very important. Introduction. You should always introduce yourself in any scenario. Like my name is Dr. Rashmi and I'm a family doctor. I'm here to talk about the events that have led you to feel like this. Also, maybe some of the questions may be difficult to answer. So, confidentiality is another important topic. You sh and reassurance that what they are going to tell you will be kept confidential unless there is a risk to another person. So you should always say that anything that's said here today will be confidential unless I feel another person is potentially at risk in the case. I would need to share some information and I appreciate that some questions may be difficult to answer. You should always say if there is anything you don't want to answer right now, we can come back to it another time. When you enter the room, you should always observe the appearance, the behavior and speech throughout the consultation. In a suicide case, the most common observa observation is poor eye contact, withdrawn body language, psychomotor retardation. Always use open-ended questions to explore the patient's current psychological state. Like what, how, where, why, who, when. Analyze the patient mood and effect. Demonstrate an empathic consulting style throughout. Explore the impact of mood on activities of daily living. You should always analyze the current episode of self-harm and ask for the details.
check for anhedonia, loss of interest or enjoyment in the activities previously perceived as rewarding. It's one of the core feature of depression. Assess fatigue and poor motiv motivation. Check for the patient's sleep patterns like early morning waking, insomnia, hypersomnia. Explore other depression symptoms. The ability to self-care, eating habits, feeling of guilt and worthlessness. Assess the activities of daily living. Explore substance use like alcohol consumption, recreational drugs, etc. Risk assessment. Ask for self-harm, suicide or homicide. In if the patient has attempted suicide, you should always analyze was there a precipitant, was the self-harm planned or impulsive, did the patient carry out any final acts, any suicide note, leaving a will, you know, like terminating contracts of mobile phone, gas and electricity. Any precautions taken against discovery, closing curtains, locking doors, waiting until they knew everyone would be out of the house and not back for several hours, going somewhere very remote. What method of self-harm was involved? Was the patient alone? Where were they when they self-harmed? What was going through their mind at the time? Did they think their self-harm would end their life? What did they do straight after the self-harm? Assess after. Did the patient call anyone? How did they get to the emergency or the clinic? Who were found by? How did they feel when help arrived? How does the patient feel about the attempt now? Any regret? And does the patient feel suicidal even now? Or homicidal? Also ask the family history of suicides. Explore uh, specifics of self-harm including method and planning. Explore the protective factors that does the patient feel there is anything to live for. Also ask what does the patient think might prevent them from doing this again in the future. Mostly at the end of the conversation, you will see a sad and tearful appearance, consistent poor eye contact, the patient maintaining a slow and monotonous speech, poor concentration, anhedonia and feeling of guilt, insomnia and fatigue, poor appetite and blunted affect. Closing the consultation. Thank the patient 
assess safety plan. If applicable, signpost the patient to appropriate agencies like personal support network, local support line, smartians, local mental health services that see people who self-refer, any housing services, citizens advice bureau, alcohol and drug services, domestic violence services and counseling services. At the end, I would like to keep you the sad person scale in mind. Always when you see a suicide case, if you write it down before entering the room, it will help you formalize your questionnaire and the history taking in a algorithm manner. So always check for the sex. Male is more than female. Age, extremities of age, very young or old. Depression, previous attempt ethanol use or drug use rational to suicide a family history of suicide organized plan non-support severe illness or future plans this will give you an analysis that if the patient needs to be discharged, admitted or not. So if less than two points come from this, then you can discharge the patient. If there are two points and more, but with a good support, you can still discharge the patient and ask for follow-ups. If more than two points and there is no support, you should admit the patient. And uh, three points and plus, you have to definitely admit the patient. For hospitalization, we have to fill out a form one and hospitalize. Thank you.